We are in such a season and time right now that penetrating the powers of darkness is essential. And that's every one of our responsibility. Because if you're not penetrating darkness, they're penetrating you. Has everybody got it? If you're not going after them and penetrating and removing them and driving them out, they are driving you out. But I've been a believer 25 years. Too bad. The devil doesn't look how long you've been believing. In fact, the word believe means to follow. One of the things the enemy fears is those who would go after him. We're to be attacking him. If you attack him, your attacks will be less. Has everybody got it? So as we continue to drive out the powers of darkness and go forward and push them back, we establish the presence of God. And we establish a place of habitation for me and you. The atmosphere around you should always be the habitation of God. Does everybody understand that? Because if it's not the habitation of the Lord, it's the habitation of evil. One or the other. There is no in between. There are no gray areas. It's either light or darkness. Amen? So it is our responsibility not only to drive out, but it's our responsibility to take dominion and authority. It's our responsibility to feed our spirit so it has dominion over the soul until the soul is completely converted. There is a, a scripture I'm going to go to right away so we can get going with this. Revelation 12. Revelation 12. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> there are there are belief systems that are true and there are belief systems that are false. Amen. Amen? See, people believe in certain things, but they're not true. And they follow things that are incorrect. Many times if you follow things by how you feel, you'll find that they're incorrect. Again, we go back to the arena that God is not looking for us to live out of the soul. He's looking for us to live out of the spirit. Amen? Amen. Because if you're living out of the soul, you're going to live out of the flesh also. In Revelation 12, 7, would you speak it with me? This is reality right here. This is important. It says that what? War broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So where are they? In other words, this was the, they were at one time in the habitation of God's presence, and the Lord removed them. And then war broke out between God's angels and Satan's angels, because he took a third of the angels with them. And the Lord said, that's enough of this. You are now removed from my presence. And they were sent to another place, and that place is called the second heaven. Is what we know as the second dimension. But in this second heaven is where Satan's kingdom rules. It is an atmosphere that's the next atmosphere beyond here. This is the first. Then there's a second and then there's a third where God is placed, his dwelling place is. And it says here, and they, and they, verse 8, and they did not prevail nor was a place found for them in heaven anymore. That word heaven again is representation of God's presence. But there will be a time when they will no longer be in the presence of the unseen. They will have to come out. They will all be driven into the physical realm where mankind will see them all. That will happen in Revelation time. And you just better hope you're not here then. <laughs> Verse 9. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. Is he still deceiving the whole world? Yes, by false doctrines, doctrines of demons, false belief systems. All of these areas where people have this belief system or they want to believe what they want to believe instead of believing what the truth is. So he is the one who deceives the whole world. Why? Because he rules the earth. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast with him. Where was he cast to? The earth. The earth. In other words, the atmosphere. Again, there'll be a time when he is driven right into the physical realm. 
Right now he's not. Although he uses people by possessing them with demons so that he, the devil can use them to do his work. And verse 10. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. The power of his Christ. I love it. The power of his Christ. See, God took the word of God and made a body. Not the dust. He took the word of God and made a body. And he put that body in a womb of a human. And he filled that body with himself. And he was born into this realm. And he called himself the Christ because he was the power the, he, that is associated with the anointing, the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty was all packed up in this little body, into this little seed that was going to grow and become a child, and become an adult, and become a man, a son of man, and then the son of God and God himself. And he was going to express through this body truth. He was going to express a way home because man was lost. So God had to come himself to make the way. But he had to prepare the way for man to come home. So in this it says here that now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has, have come. And the accuser of our brother, honey, you all know that the devil accuses you all day long. Even in your thoughts, he's always attacking you. Unworthiness, you should have done this, you should have done that, guilt and condemnation. He's always attacking you. If you don't recognize that, you're going to constantly blow it. You'll constantly be taken out. You'll fall in the cycle of deception. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night, he's been cast down. In other words, he's been dethroned. He's been deactivated. He no longer has power over you, only if you allow him to. Amen. And it says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. That is by your repentance and being cleansed by the blood. <laughs> Amen. By the word of their what? Testimony. It is called divine utterance. Everyone say divine utterance. <laughs> Everyone say, God is still building my testimony. Your testimony continue to be built to the day you leave. But see, everything that God... Look, at you don't, you don't learn anything unless you go through something. <clears throat> Amen? Then God tests what you're going to do with it. Whether you're going to use his tools, his weapons, or you're going to use your own. And if you continue to use your own, you'll, stay, you'll go through that test again until you finally start to use his. Amen? So they overcame the powers of darkness by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to death. In other words, they didn't care. They no longer live for themselves. They live for him. So everybody got it. They did what? They no longer live for themselves. They live for him. See, if you're still in survival mode, you're living for yourself. If you're in surrender mode, you're living for him. Why? Because you totally trust him. The Lord is my shepherd. I won't lack. He's come to bring me life and life abundantly. He does far above all I could ever ask or think. Now that arena of don't abundantly far above all I could ever ask or think means that you must do something. You must do divine utterance. Calling those things that are not as though they are. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. What you speak is what you eat. This, everything about overcoming has got to come out of your mouth because this is the greatest weapon you have. This is your weapon. Everything is triggered. When you say in the name of Jesus, you just made a decree. It is the seal from God Almighty. But if you don't understand that, see, the devil knows what you think. So if you don't understand it, if that's not an impartation to you, nothing happens. Amen. Nothing. Because it must be backed by faith. Faith is hope, trust in him. Faith is saying, thank you, Lord, for doing it. I don't have to see it right now, but I know it's coming. I know it's coming. In Deuteronomy chapter 8.
One of the things the enemy constantly accusing us, he accuses you in your soul so that your emotions and your thoughts prevent you from doing what God has given you to do. Then he uses man to try to bring fear to you. Deuteronomy chapter 8. If there are more divine utterance, there'll be more victory. You know, one of the things I've always realized, and I might have shared this before, is that sometimes, you know, we have that worst, that worst first thought. Ah! Or we have that arena that the first thing that you feel comes out of your soul. <laughs> so that first thing of thought, the first thing, ah, usually the first thing you, you feel or whatever is usually soulish or until that you allow the spirit to kick in. That's why we have a tendency to want to react instead of respond. That's why it's our responsibility to choke react until respond comes. Amen. So when individuals are still respond, uh, reacting more than they are responding, opens the door to the enemy. Because what you sow is what you reap. Amen? What you sow is what you reap. What you speak is what you eat. What you eat is what you become. Goes back to that again. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 1. Would you speak it with me, please? Every command which I command you today, you must be careful to observe. That you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land of which the Lord God swore to your fathers. Now, I want you to know something. God has a specific destiny for you. He wants you to possess it. But there's something you must do, cooperate. You cannot possess something without cooperation. It's like somebody giving you the wrong directions. <laughs> and that's what the enemy loves to do, give you wrong directions. Verse 2. And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to what? So I want you to know that you and I go in the wilderness so he can humble us. He likes to get our attention. So we will go through trials. We will go through tribulations. We will be afflicted. The word says many of the afflictions are righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. All. If you cooperate. It's like somebody, if you fell in a ditch 10 feet deep and you can't crawl out because it's too wide, you got to wait for somebody to throw the rope or send down a ladder, but if it's too deep, you got to have a rope. That's how God is with me and you. If you're not willing to cooperate. So when somebody throws down the rope, you can either pick it up, grab hold of it or not, or still try to do it your own way, or wait for something different. You don't want a rope. You want a ladder long enough. Or you want God to just translate you out of there to the top. See, but there are things that you want that God says, that's not what I want. So we must begin to line up what he wants in our life and not what we want in our life. Amen? So he says, look, man, you're going to go in the wilderness to humble you and to test you. To know what is in your what? In your heart. Whether you would keep his commandments or not. In other words, you are willing to follow him or not. Many people are crying, and go, Lord, why haven't you done this? And he's saying, why haven't you done this? Why haven't you done this? Well, you're waiting on me, I'm waiting on you. In verse 3, so he humbled you, allowed you to hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you to know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. <laughs> We've heard that before. Even Jesus used that same scripture to kick butt on the enemy when he was in the wilderness with the devil, wasn't he? So we got to grab hold of something. You and I do not live by bread alone. That sustains us in this realm, water and food. But sustains you in the spirit is the word and his blood, the spirit. That's why he says... He wants eternal life, must eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. In other words, you must worship. Again, this, your tongue, your mouth, is the altar. This right here is the altar. You'll either defile it or you'll honor it. One or the other. 
You'll honor what he says or you'll defile what he says. Is everybody okay? Amen. Isaiah 55. <laughs> Divine utterance. Isaiah 55 and verse 10. Is everybody there? Amen. Let's speak it. For as the rain comes down and snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. So God wants your mouth to be his mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. I love it. So the word goes forth to do what? It accomplish, prosper, and it won't return void. Now, I want you to grab hold of something because this cannot be done out of the soul. This is done out of the spirit. It must be backed by the anointing. Everything that you and I do must be backed by the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. Or it will return void. So everybody got it? <clears throat> In John 6. John chapter 6. In verse 63. And in verse 63 it says, It is the Spirit who gives what? Life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. So it must be backed by the Spirit. It must be backed by the anointing. But there are some of you who do not believe. There are many, there are many so-called believers who do not really believe. Many of them don't believe the word of God. Many of them don't even read it. And they are lost and don't even know it. They think that just by accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, they got, can, can enter home. Maybe on your deathbed. But there's a place where you and I accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We enter a whole other realm and everything is now available to me and you. Everything. Because it's training for reigning. He didn't save me and you just to build our own homes and do whatever. Amen? And build our own empire. He saved me and you so that he can move through us to rescue all the rest of the souls. Because if a person is not heavenly bound, they're earthly bound. Amen? Again, there's nothing wrong with having nice things. But so many people are so caught up in their own arena and atmosphere that they've lost sight of the eternal atmosphere. So they're not really driving out darkness. They're actually associating with it and don't even know it. Because many of the things that they spend their money on or all the other things is associated with selfishness, self-will, self-fulfilling. Is everybody okay? Acts chapter 2. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many people say, I want to see the whole world. Well, you will. When you go home, you can take a look down. You can see it all at one time. <laughs> I want to travel the world. We want to travel in the spirit to rescue as many souls as possible. See, so many people are building portfolios of places they've been and look at, look at this, look at this, look at this. Who cares? Is the kingdom being built? 
See, this is a different, I got saved 20 years ago. Man, and God's blessed me with this and blessed me with that. Praise God. Now I just travel the world. And what do you do? Well, I take pictures and have a portfolio. Wrong. That's not what it's about. You're living out of the soul and misled. Amen? We are on a mission and we must fulfill that mission. That's what this is about. You are not rescued to just be a husband, a mother, a wife. You are rescued to be a soldier in the Most High God. You are rescued for the purpose of infiltration. You are called to battle. Amen? We are called to battle. Our purpose is to destroy Satan's kingdom, and our destiny is to infiltrate the world system with the talents and abilities God's given us so we can rescue those that are lost because this one, one day when you, leave your, when you give your last breath, this whole time arena here will be like a one-night dream. For some people, it'll be a nightmare. When you give that last, last breath out, it's over. You've just entered eternal. It's either eternally with him or eternal without him. And everything that you and I have done, everything will be judged, everything will be gathered, what you've done for him. What was done in the spirit, what was done in the flesh, what was done in the soul. Only certain things will be accounted and rewarded that were done in the spirit. Is everybody okay? Praise God. Did we go to Acts 2 yet? Amen. Are we there? <laughs> Acts 2 and verse something. Are you there? <laughs> oh, glory. Let's start at verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord. Everyone say one accord. One accord. In one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, a rushing mighty wind. It filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire on one, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit did what? Gave them utterance. Woohoo! Man, I, I'm telling you, when you are baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit, there should be utterance. Utterance. Divine utterance. So they were, that was the expression of of the new birth of the church. The, the, I want you to know that the body of Christ, the body of Christ, now think about this. When we just talked about the power of Christ, the power of Christ was Jesus formed, amen? And, the, and uh, back with the anointing, the eternal presence, power and truth of God Almighty, was Jesus filled with the Spirit of God? You betcha. He was the Spirit of God. So we see here, it, sa it says that through the power of Christ. So when people are baptized in the Holy Spirit, they now have the power of Christ, the same Spirit that walk with Jesus, in Jesus, and through Jesus is now in me and you. Did Jesus utter? Did he preach? He gospeled, right? All the gospel. He spoke on all kinds of things. He exposed the enemy. He cast out devils. Laid hands on the sick. He raised the dead. He did it all. The same Spirit's in me and you now if you're baptized with the Holy Spirit. One of the things that should be happening after you are filled and baptized with the Holy Spirit, there should be divine utterance. Divine utterance. Divine utterance. Everyone say divine utterance. Divine utterance. Oh, hallelujah, 2 Corinthians 5. If it, divine meaning backed by the Spirit of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 16. Let's speak it. Therefore, from now on, we, recognize, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know, thus no longer know him. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. If he's in Christ, if he's, wait a minute, what's the Christ? It's the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. That means you are living in a different atmosphere. So everybody got this? You are living in a different atmosphere. You are from a different place now. You are no longer from the earth, even though you're here. You are from heaven. You are from your home. You've been reconciled back home again. So we need to begin to think like king's kids. 
soldiers, warriors, eternal lights. We need to begin to think that way. That's why you set your mind on the things above and not from the things below. Are you ready for more? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 18. Now, all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of what? Reconciliation. That is that, the, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of what? Reconciliation. That word of reconciliation is called divine utterance. Now then we are what? We are what? We are ambassadors. For who? Christ. We're not ambassadors for a nation. We're ambassadors for a kingdom. We are ambassadors of Christ. Wow. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him of who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So I want you to know that God is pleading through you. Pleading means speaking. Pleading is what? Speaking. That means he's trying to bring a divine utterance through you all the time. <clears throat> Psalm 45. Psalm 45. Verse 1. My heart is overflowing with a good theme. Out of the heart speaks the mouth. My heart is overflowing with a good theme. I recite my composition Concerning the king, my tongue. Everyone say, my tongue is the pen of a ready writer. In other words, you're rewriting certain things through divine nature, through your divine uh, utterances. You are rewriting things. You are changing courses. You are changing history. Things are changing right now because of people with divine utterance. You will change the circumstances in your home, in your life in your job, in your health, in your finances by divine utterance. But so many people are taking control on how they feel. And they don't, they don't step into the spirit because they're, they're taken captive in the wrong atmosphere. See, you've got, what does it say? When the spirit of heaviness comes on, lift, lift up praise. Amen. Why? So a garment of praise comes upon you, and the enemy must scatter. That's why it's amazing where people don't get this yet in the area of worship. When those words come up, you're actually speaking divine utterance. <laughs> Something's going on in your life. Man, I sing it full force. I don't care if I sound like a cow. It's going forth. You don't like how I sound? Move away. I'm sowing. <laughs> Praise God. Is everybody all right? Amen. Ephesians 6. We got to change the atmosphere. I even leave praise and worship music to go to my home for my dog and my bird. <laughs> I want my house to maintain an atmosphere. Of God's presence. Hallelujah. <laughs> Try to get my bird spirit filled. Little chicken hawk. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 16. Did we go there already? I mean, Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6 and verse 14. Is everybody there? Amen. Let's speak it. Stand what? There. Stand for, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. 
above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, hello, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplications in the Spirit, means praying in tongues. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And for me that what? Utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to speak known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Is that powerful or what? You say, man, pray for me. I want divine utterance. I don't want anyone to interfere I don't want nothing to interfere with what God wants me to speak. Divine utterance. We are operating in a dying world. See, people don't realize that the world is dying. Does everybody know that? The world is dying. It's dying. People in the world are dying. Children are dying. Some of them are starving to death. People are being persecuted. People are dying left and right. People are going to hell. They're dying. The world is dying. Everything is on its way for dying death. Why? Because death rules the earth now. It's called the prince of power of error, death. Has everybody got this? That's why you and I are rescued. So that we are the light, the salt. We are the truth. And we're to bring forth divine utterance to penetrate darkness. Oh, glory. We must be filled with the Spirit to speak His words. Proverbs 15. Proverbs 15. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> verse 22 is everybody there what does it say without counsel plans go array but in a multitude of counsels they are established a man has joy by the answer of his mouth and a word spoken in due season, how good it is. That's a divine utterance. The way of life wins upward for the wise that he may turn away from what? Hell below. Wow. So a word spoken in, a, in, a, in due season is good. In other words, you may be going through something. Somebody may come up to you and give you a word. It could be an encouraging word. It could be anything. You could pick up the word of God and open up to something, and all of a sudden you just hear the Spirit say, boom. And he says, I want you to speak this. Why? Because I want you to bring divine utterance into this realm. See, you and I are taking things that are eternal and bringing it into a temporary place so that we can change what is going on in a temporary realm and establish an eternal position. What a responsibility that is for me and you. Again, we weren't rescued just to have a good time. We were rescued to fulfill a mission. And we can't lose sight of that. Amen? 1 Peter chapter 4. First Peter chapter 4. In verse 7. 1 Peter 4, verse 7. Let's speak it. But the all, end of all things is at hand. Therefore be serious and watchful in your prayers. And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another and without grumbling. Now is grumbling divine utterance? Heck no. And as each one has received a gift, Minister to, it, one, to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. 
If anyone speaks, let him speak of the oracles of God. The oracles of God is divine utterance. It's his word. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and dominion forever and ever. So in this, you and I are speaking the oracles of God. It's also representation of the mysteries of God. Go to 1 Corinthians 12. In verse something. I guess we'll start at 4. Is everybody there? Amen. 1 Corinthians 12, 4. Let's speak it. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are diversities of ministries, but the same Lord. There are diversities of activities, but it's the same God who works all in all. He just mentioned the Trinity. The Holy Spirit, the Lord Jesus, and the Father. Verse 7, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of what? The profit of all. For each one is given a word of wisdom. For each one, uh, for each, for to one is given a word of wisdom through the Spirit. To another, the word of knowledge. To another, the same Spirit. To another, faith. To the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healings. The same Spirit. To another, workings of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. But one in the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. So you got to be ready in season and out of season to allow the gifts of the Spirit to be manifested through you. Does everybody get it? All right. Now, I want to talk about something that's important here because there is gifts of utterance. There are also gifts of revelation. There's gifts of power. But the three major gifts of utterance is tongues. Is everybody with me? Tongues, interpretations of tongues, and the other one, <laughs> prophecy. These are utterance gifts, tongues, interpretations of tongues, and prophecy, so that they can be uttered. Now, even when the revelation gifts are manifested, it, it's still, you still have to utter it because you have the word of knowledge, amen, the word of wisdom, and then discerning of spirits. But all these are revelation gifts. And then you have power gifts and so forth, healings. And, but I just want you to know that none of these, everything relies on the arena being filled and baptized in the Holy Spirit and living out of the spirit and not out of the soul. Because living out of the soul will not produce the gifts of the Spirit to produce soulish talents, soulish assumptions. You know, you get a lot of people that can talk about people and whatever because they can, in other words, read people's body language and whatever. That's not, that's not gifts of the Spirit. That's got nothing to do with it. Gifts of the Spirit is when the Spirit speaks to you or you see something and it's supposed to be divinely Uttered. It's the utterance. Utterance, again, is essential for each and every one of us. That's why there's an area when you're praying in tongues, that's, that's the most important gift that there is. Praying in tongues. And so many people have neglected it. So many people don't even want it. I don't want that gift. I'm satisfied with salvation. Well, how stupid can you be and still breathe? That's a part of salvation. In fact, Jesus commanded us to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. It was a command. He didn't ask people. He said, I command you to wait till you're baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit. Why? So that you can express me and I, you can have my presence, my spirit. Amen? But then there's an area where you and I must maintain these. We, we've got to come to a place of maintaining. Just because you're going to baptize in the Holy Spirit, spoken tongues once or whatever, doesn't mean it's over with. You now must maintain. I pray in tongues every single day. I start my day by praying in the Spirit. That is called praying in the Spirit. When you ask somebody, hey man, you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit? Yeah. Well, do you pray in the Spirit? Yeah. Uh, well, let's pray in the Spirit. And the other person will go, our Father who art in heaven. That ain't praying in the Spirit, homie. That's praying in your own understanding. 
When you pray in your own language, it's called praying in your own understanding. But there's a place where you pray in the spirit by tongues, which is essential because you're speaking directly to God. You're speaking the mysteries of God and you have divine utterance where you are able to interpret what the spirit is saying. Now you're able to give a word of knowledge, word of wisdom. You have to discern all of these things come out where the true divine utterance can come forth and the atmosphere can change. People can change and it penetrates the heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, let's go a little further. Second Peter chapter 1. Second Peter chapter 1. In verse 2. Everybody there? Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. And his divine power is given to us all things that pertain. Wait a minute. His divine power. Where is his divine power? In Christ. Huh. His divine power is in the power of Christ. Now, wait a minute. The power of Christ is brought by the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, so his divine power is given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through what? Through lust. Through us. So divine utterance comes by the power of Christ that's in you and me. Divine utterance is essential. Why? Listen, when you are in that arena, as the divine, as this divine utterance comes forth, you are partaking in the divine nature. See, so you and I have got to constantly connect with the divine nature also. And that is connected by divine utterance. Hello. Some people just don't understand that yet. That's why they wonder, even though sometimes you'll praise and worship and whatever, and still act like an idiot afterwards. Because divine utterance hasn't gone forth. Unless you're truly speaking those words that are up there out of the heart and not out of the mind. See, when you worship out of the heart, it's different. Now you're doing divine utterance. But it's divine utterance that brings me and you into a place of partaking in the divine nature all the time. Because as a man thinks, so he is, right? When a man speaks, so he eats. And what he eats, he becomes. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. First Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 4. I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God which was given to you by Christ Jesus that you were enriched in everything by him in all what? Utterance. Utterance and all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you so that you come short and no gift, eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ who will also confirm you to the end that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Now again, it takes fellowship. If you're not in fellowship, you're not going to utter. Amen? Because you're looking to him to ask him what to speak. Lord, what do you want me to speak today? Lord, what do you want me to see today? Lord, what do you want me to hear today? What do you want me to do? I'm nothing without you. I need your help in everything. Show me what I'm supposed to do. And please make it plain and simple. And you know what he'll do? Many times he'll say, pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit, and I'm going to release it. 
because by you praying in the spirit, I'm going to release it from my throne room. Now the devil can't steal what he releases because it doesn't go in your mind. It goes in your spirit. It doesn't go in your soul. It goes in your spirit because the devil has access to your soul if you let him. Hello. He knows what you think. I keep hearing, well, the devil doesn't know what I think. Oh, really? Is that why you act in that way? Is that why you do the things you do? Are you trying to make an excuse? No, the devil knows exactly what you think. They are spirits. They walk right through your bodies, and you don't even know it sometimes. Amen? Does everybody understand that? Oh, hallelujah. So it takes fellowship. It takes relationship. So there's a communication in the spirit. Colossians chapter 4. Takes endurance. Takes persistence and consistency. You know, I, so many people give up so easy and quit so quickly. You know, they, get, they even get offended with God because God didn't do something for them. Believe me, if you get offended with God, you're easily going to get offended with people. <laughs> well, God didn't do it for me. I can't tell you how many people I've come across that were angry with God because God didn't do something for them. And when you really get down to it and you find out what, why God didn't do it is because they didn't cooperate and God was trying to do it. But they wanted to do it their way and not God's way. Oh, Glory. But it's going to take endurance. It's going to take denying yourself. Death to the old man. Colossians 4, is everybody there? In verse 2. He says, continue what? Earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Meanwhile, praying also for us that God would open to us a door for the word to, be, to speak the mystery of Christ for which I also am in change, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom toward those who are outside redeeming the time. Let your speech also be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to what? Answer each other. In other words, divine utterance. Divine utterance. Is everybody okay? 1 Corinthians 2. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, when the flood of the enemy comes in, all kinds of stuff begins to happen. Confusion comes, whatever. You know, people panic. Not if you're in the spirit, though. Because the enemy can only get so close to you. He can't go beyond that atmosphere. But again, he likes to make paper airplanes with messages on them and throw them, you know. And people, people go, ah! They don't read them, you know? Just let them be. <clears throat> you know, panic. They knew, I gotta call a plumber. Just shut the water off. You know, something simple. I mean, people really panic so quickly. Soon as they feel the pain, dear God, I got this. Worse first. Hello? I mean, does everybody get it? We always think the worst first. We get a cold or, oh, God, I got cancer. The devil always wants to put cancer on you. Amen? Does everybody understand this? Man, he's going to try and throw anything. Yes, that's what I am. Listen, as soon as you start thinking with that, you need to break that agreement off. Hello? And you need to start... Divine utterance quickly. So you can shoo them out of there. And so what you're speaking is changing you. So you're going to change the atmosphere around you. You're going to move things out. And then you're going to get stronger in, so in yourself. Amen? And the new man. Oh, hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9. No. Yes. Okay. Maybe. Let's start at verse 6. 
However, we speak what? Wisdom among those who are what? Mature, yet not the wisdom of this age nor the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, divine utterance. The hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages of our, for, our, for whose glory? Our glory. Which none of the rulers of this age knew, for if they had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor you heard, nor entered in the heart of the man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Okay. God's got a lot of things prepared for us. It says here, but God has revealed them to us through his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. Okay, so how are you going to get this out? See, many people have to search and try and understand the word. And I want you to know that only through the Spirit of God can you interpret what God is saying through the Word. But listen, you pray in tongues, you have a divine utterance, these mysteries are going to be brought and put in your spirit. Do you know that the whole plan of God and the, the whole destiny of your life is in your spirit already by praying in tongues? It's already there. But the enemy loves to come and bring distraction. Then we sway. We become complacent, compromising, and then even lazy. When you hit lazy, you know you're in real trouble. Amen? Amen. Oh, glory. Is everybody okay? <laughs> Divine utterance. I'm going to close here. I think. 2 Timothy 4. The mysteries of God. Divine utterance. Second Timothy chapter 4. So prophecy is divine utterance. But you can't just prophesy something that is not led by the Spirit. Amen? Amen. People try to prophesy all kinds of things and it ain't happening. Emotional prophecies. Emotional words of knowledge. In other words, gifts of the spirit are not gifts of the soul. Amen? Amen? It's different. Oh, glory. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Let's read it. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, and fulfill your calling or your ministry or your mission that mission is assisted by your divine utterance Has everybody got it divine utterance if you haven't been baptized in the holy spirit get it go go seek god ask for prayer ask him to fill it's a promise from god would you lift your hands to heaven Father, we thank you for your word. And we ask today, Lord, that you would give everyone eyes to see, ears to hear, a heart to receive, and divine utterance. That you'll fill them afresh with your spirit. That you'll empower them. That their testimony will come forth as a witness of your glory and your power. I'm asking today, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. And I decree in Jesus' name that each and every one in this room will fulfill their mission according to your will and your way in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.